All right, 97.7 Outlaw Radio FM listeners, you already know what to do. Tonight, right here in full effect, we have the one, the only, West Coast hip-hop legend. Some of you guys might remember his music from the video game Need for Speed Underground 2. Right here, right now, here it is, Sly Boogie. How you doing this evening? What's happening? Good, how you doing? I'm doing pretty good, man. I first and foremost have to say, man, it's good to have you on my radio station. And also, thank you for that dope song, man. I'm not going to lie, that was, that was a cool thing to wake up to this morning. Yeah, last night I was, uh, I just got inspired and just said, you know what, fuck it, I'm just going to do a drop, drop for Immortal. I ain't going to lie, I woke up, man, I was vibing to that. I was probably listening to that, like, I had that on repeat majority of the day, man. That song is catchy as hell. Nice. <laughs> <laughs> But I gotta ask you, Sly. Like, I, I, I want, I want to know, man. Like, taking you back to the beginning of your uh, music career, man. Like, what actually inspired you to get into the music industry? Uh, well, my family really. Um, my father, my uncles, they, uh, they had an R&B group, and uh, when I was a kid, I used to go to the studio with them, uh, to the studio sessions. Uh, my uncle, he plays several instruments. He's He's a very talented musician, and that kind of inspired me. Actually, I have another uncle also that's a class that was a classical pianist, so that 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 inspired me to get into music. And then, of course, uh, you know, uh, listening to music, uh, we had records at the, at the pad. We had, you know, old soul records and and you know a whole lot of stuff that that uh, we used to play. And I have to ask you as well, did you ever, like, decide, like, when you were younger, did you ever want to uh, get into piano and whatnot by seeing your family do it, or, or were you always on the hip-hop side of things? Yeah, I mean, I, I took piano theory uh, in school, um, but, you know, before I took piano theory, I was writing lyrics, I was writing writing, writing rhymes, so, uh, yeah, I, I, took, I took theory after that in, in uh, college. And also, at the age of 19, you actually formed the group uh, Back Out of the Shack. I have to ask you, what's the story behind that group? And of course, how did you actually meet the other members? Oh, oh, you're going way back, okay. Uh, yeah, that was, shoot, man, my memory's so blurry on that. That was back, that, that was actually the first uh, deal that I got. Um, I don't quite remember the details of how it came about. But as far as I know, Back of the Shack was was me, and uh, it started off as me and a few friends. I had some cats from Philly, some musicians uh, from Philly that I had hooked up with, and uh, we had recorded some songs, and then, um, man, I forgot the dude's name at the label. Uh, the label at the time was, I believe it was, uh, um, shit, you know what, man, my bad, I forgot the name of the label. <laughs> hey, man, it's all good, but, you know, I'm, I'm pretty much putting uh, putting you right on the spot and going back to, like, when you were 19, right? So, it's understandable. Yeah, yeah that was actually the first, uh, the first rodeo, so, but it, it, it kind of fell through. I don't quite remember how that happened, but yeah, that one fell through. Like, and then uh, after that, after that came, uh, I believe, the Black Spooks deal. That was actually my next question as well. You know, like um, uh, you actually you also formed the group, obviously, like the Black the Black Spooks. But I have to ask you, you actually received the deal with them for from Perspective Records. I have to ask you, how did that record deal come to be for you guys? And of course, what was it like actually being signed signed to Perspective? Yeah, that one actually came about, um, I believe we did a radio drop for Julio G. No, <laughs> you got me trying to piece together how everything happened. Um, we had a friend who actually passed, who was a friend of a friend who passed our demo to one of the A&Rs at the label. And... Um, that's how we got signed. See, we had uh, a demo tape, and one of our friends that we record with uh, passed it to his friend, and uh, that's how we got in there. I believe his, his name was Chuck. That's his name, Chuck. Chuck passed it to a cat named, um, shit, I forgot his name. Anyway, yeah, that's how that came about. And being 
being on the label was pretty much just <laughs> we had to turn in records, had to turn in music. Um, we got to a point to where the deal fell through. I don't re quite remember why, but it fell through and it didn't happen. And we ended up getting shelved and, and, and that was that. Well, I, I got to say it personally. They most definitely dropped the ball on that because they, they didn't know the talent that was that was actually potentially in front of them. So I got to say that that's all on them. Yeah, I mean, you know, it's whatever, you know. And also, in August 26, 2003, you actually released one of my favorite records that you actually put out uh, by the name of Judgment Day. I have to ask you, what's the story behind that amazing record? And of course, like, how, how did it feel? Like, you know what I mean? having your first album blow up the way it did. Because, like, you had uh, songs in, like, multiple video games on MTV, like, all over the radio. Um, it was a good feeling. Uh, you know, me and uh, Tex were recording on that one, King Tex from, from the Wake Up Show. And uh, we put, put an album together with what we had in the bag. And, um... They eventually uh, did the deal with Jay, Jay Records, and then Jay came in and, and uh, started working their magic, and that's my name. Actually, California Remix came out first, and that was uh, mainly Swan Tech, uh, that one. Um, and then after that, Jay came in with That's My Name, and then that's when things started moving when they came in. And when we're still on the topic of That's My Name, uh, directly uh, next on my question list, it was, you were featured on the hit video game Need for Speed Underground 2. I have to ask you, how did, your, how did you get connected with, like, with uh, sorry, Electronic Arts? And of course, how does it feel knowing that millions of individuals were virtually street racing to your music? <laughs> well, it feels good uh, knowing that, you know, people were vibing to it. Um, as far as how it got on the uh, video game, uh, you know what? I believe I believe Jay got it on there. And I have to say as well though, Sly, like I, I, I grew up on like the early Need for Speed games. So I remember being a kid, you know what I mean, playing uh, Need for Speed Underground one and two, like those are my joints. Like that I think I burnt out like four or five copies of the game and I remember whenever you're I used to actually put it on repeat on the game back when you hit the toggle button. And then you could actually replay a song. Your yours is my favorite song. That actually just drag race to man. That that was my shit back in the day. Nice. Okay. But also in 2004, you were actually featured on Executioner's album uh, Revelations on the song The Regulators. I have to ask you, how did yourself and the Executioners get connected? And of course, what was it like working on that track? Uh, that was Tech 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 uh, arranged that and. Um... He had the track, I went in and laid it, and uh, that one was probably in the process of us recording Judgment Day. So, yeah, that's how that's how that one came about. And I gotta say, though, yourself and the Executioners, man, you guys had phenomenal chemistry. I, I was really hoping back in the day to actually see more of you guys, because I, I really like what you guys did on that track. Yeah, it was just one of those things where it's like I, I went in the studio and so I was like, hey, uh, uh, you know, you want to, or Tech was like, you want to hop on this? Uh, and I was like, yeah, so I hopped on it and uh, that's that, that was that. We had a lot of records like that where, you know, uh, Tech would say, hey, you want to hop on it? Are you fucking with it? Yeah, yeah, I fuck with it. And also, in like 2011, you actually uh, did some work with Daz Dillinger on one of his records. I have to ask you, how did yourself and Daz Dillinger get connected? And of course, what was it like working with him? Because in my personal opinion, he is probably one of the most like underrated producers actually out on the West Coast. Oh man, he's a genius. Uh, very, very talented. Uh, me and Daz hooked up on uh, social media. Um, we... Uh, you know, arranged, we shot, shot each other. I think I shot him a track and he shot me one. And then, uh, we shot him back and, uh, that's how that happened. And 
I gotta say, you know what I mean? Like, like I was saying earlier, what, 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 pertaining to Daz, man, he, everything he produces is a masterpiece, man. So you guys most definitely had a phenomenal collaboration. Like, do you think in the future you guys might get together and do, do, do another project? Because I know he's still pretty active. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, yeah, if if it's if it's possible, yeah, definitely. I would definitely like working with him. Um, you know, I'm a fan of his work. Always have been. Um, I know that he uh, definitely puts time in his. You, you could tell just by listening to his uh, his work that he 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 puts time into it. And uh, you know, definitely, definitely would like to work with him again. And also in the year 2013, you actually participated in a collaborative mixtape titled "Fully Loaded." I have to ask you, how did that uh, project come to be? And of course, what was it like working alongside Young Dre and Platinum Stat? Fully loaded. Fully loaded. Uh, shit, man. I didn't done. You got. You got to bear with me. I didn't done so much shit. I don't even remember half the shit I do. Really. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not gonna lie to you, man. Like I, I, I remember. I remember, man. You done. You've done a lot of stuff. So I knew asking the mixtape question, I was gonna be like, oh god, like he's done so many of them. So I tried picking yeah, one got, of them that I thought that I had a feeling yeah. you might remember, right? You got me. You got me over here uh, <laughs> googling shit. I'm. I'm like, okay, fully loaded platinum staff. <laughs> Uh, let's see. Yeah, man. Even though how much I'm a fan of an artist, man, I always, I always do my digging during an interview, and I, I, I always get an artist to be like, "Damn, like, wait, I did that." Ah, that's what's <laughs> up. Okay, so you're talking about V8 tracks. Oh uh, yes. Uh, the fully loaded, fully loaded mixtape. Okay, yeah, those are the homies from uh from the valley. Uh, okay. Yeah, okay, I remember this. Yeah, we shot the video in uh Silmar. At the uh, um, the good night in, okay, yeah, I was on uh, house arrest, had my ankle monitor on, and uh, couldn't leave because my pre-trial officer said no, you can't go nowhere. So I went next door. We there was a Motel Six, I believe, next door, and we shot it in the parking lot. Uh, yeah, I remember this. And I got to say, man, no worries on the house rest thing. I've been there, done that myself, and it sucks, man. But, hey, at least you got to get out a little bit. You know what I mean? I couldn't even leave my house, so. Oh, yeah? You had a monitor? No, no, I, but uh, I live in, a, live in a really small town, and unfortunately, it's like a redneck town. So if you actually walk out of your house, people will be like, hey, you're on house rest. And then, you know, it's just pretty much didn't want, didn't want to chance it. So I just stuck my head out the oh, window that. and just enjoyed the fresh air best I could. Oh, that's whack, man. Yeah. They were coming out the house, and they just, oh, wow. Yeah, it's, huh? uh, and, yeah, it's, you know, it is what it is, but, you know, the main thing is, it's better than sitting, at least you can sit in your house and watch TV than, than being in the clink, so, you know. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah. Yeah, this track that, uh, was fully loaded, yeah, I remember it. It was, it was, it was a nice track. That dude, V8, uh, V8 is nice. He, he, that, that was a cool track. I like that one. And also, back in November, I remember you actually sent this to the station's email, uh, the single, The COVID. I have, I have to ask you, tell us a bit more about that. I, I obviously know the story behind it, because what's going on today in today's world. But I was wondering, how can our listeners actually go about purchasing themselves a copy of The COVID? Oh, okay. Yeah, uh, well, it's available on all platforms. Uh, shit, iTunes, uh, 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 you can stream it. Yeah, basically, you just just go just go on up, you know, and then you know go on and uh copy. That's definitely uh it will be a collector's item. And I also saw as well that you were actually working on a new mixtape slash EP. I was wondering if you can tell us a bit more about that project, and of course, what can our listeners expect from that when it does drop to the general public? Oh yeah, this one uh this one is gonna be a good one because it's. See, when you ain't got no label involved and you ain't got somebody standing over you telling you, you know, telling you what to do or trying to mold you into what they think people want, you know, you're going to get raw shit. You're going to get the raw, uncut shit. It's going to sound totally different from what's on the radio. You know, it's not going to sound generic. It's going to be raw, just raw shit, you know, the real raw shit. And that's what they can expect musically. They can expect it be very diverse. Uh, it's not just going to be one sound. Uh, I'm not going to pound them over the head with a bunch of weird shit, but it's, it's going to be very, very diverse. It's going to be very high quality 
uh, music. I don't want a quality hip hop. It is going to be hip hop, but it's going to be some different shit. And you know what it sounds like? It sounds like Sly Boogie keeping it 100% like he always does. So I'm excited for that record. I'm most definitely going to cop myself a copy when it does actually get released. Oh, okay. That's what's up, man. That's what's up. Yeah, it's, 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 I'm working on it uh, every day. Every day. Uh, shit, I'm off two hours of sleep right now. Just had a cup of coffee. Uh, you know, there's no sleep. I'm working every day on it. And I have to ask you, Sly, like, is there anything I missed during this interview? Like, anything else you still want to promote? We still have you here live on the Canadian airwaves. Uh, basically, uh, I'm still catching up. Uh, I'm going to put it out there. I'm still catching up. I just got out. Just got out. So, you know, not too long. Stepped out the halfway house. So, I'm still catching up on everything. Soon you'll see uh, a place. You can go to listen to music. You're going to have to sign up for it. Uh, it's going to be uh, exclusive. You have to be, you're going to have to be a member, and uh, you're going to get all the new shit. Uh, soon I'll be posting that link. You can hit the uh, the Facebook, uh, Sly Boogie 7, I believe it is, and the Twitter. You can hit the Twitter. Uh, there's some fake pages out there, just to let you know. If you uh, if you hit a page, and just just send me a message, and you, you'll know it's me. Um, so I believe the Facebook is Facebook Sly Boogie Seven. The Twitter, I believe, is Sly Boogie Nine Hundred Nine. Um, and I just hopped on Instagram at Sly Books. It's S L Y underscore B O O G Z. So. Um, soon, on one of those platforms, I'll be sharing a link where you can go, uh, you can sign up and get exclusive access to all the new shit. Uh, you, you will see some, uh, video footage of, uh, studio sessions, uh, some beat production, um, all kinds of shit. So stay tuned for that. And I do want to say, I actually, I, I can I can agree with Sly that there is some fake accounts out there. I think before I messaged the right account, I hit up, uh, one, when I was inquiring to you to get an interview, um, I reached out to, uh, I think, an, another Instagram, not the one that we're like, I, we, we've we been connected on. And when I asked, like, hey, I did my whole, like, you know, my little reach out, and the person was like, who's Sly Boogie? And I'm like, your name's Sly Boogie. Like, there's a picture of the artist, there's a picture of the name, they're like, we don't know Sly Boogie. And it's like... Really? You like you make it? Yeah, man. <laughs> I'm just like, okay, well, you know, wrong one. Yeah, man. These people, man, I don't know what they be doing out here. I, mean, I gotta say though, I'm glad they're yeah, honest they... though, because that would have been really embarrassing. Come, come tonight, and I didn't have the right slap boogie. Like that, that would be embarrassing. Oh uh, yeah, yeah. That's a lot of that going on, man. It's, we gotta be careful out here with these 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 weirdos and the social media and all these people hacking and shit. You gotta you gotta be careful. Most definitely. I had a few people try and get me up on it, but then I just say, here's my number, give me a call if I have a bad eye, if I have a bad feeling, because, you know, I grew up on majority of the majority of these hip-hop artists, so, you know, you hear the voice, you'll know if it's them or not, so, you know, yeah. normally if they won't call you, that's normally an indication that it's not the right person. Right, right, yeah, 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 definitely. Yeah, just send me a message if you have any doubts, if it's, if it's looking kind of funny, you know, send me a message, and, you know, if you need to hear my voice, I ain't got no problem doing that, you know, just as long as you ain't on no funny shit, you know. Hey, man, most definitely uh, we, we can, Yeah, yeah, we can hop on the phone, hop on the horn, and you can verify that it's me. But I got to say, Sly, first and foremost, man, before we, right, right before we just uh, wrap things up here, I got to say thank you so much for years of amazing music, man. You most definitely helped me through some difficult times and also millions upon millions worldwide. So thank you for the, everything you've done hip-hop-wise, and I'm looking forward to the new projects when they do get released. Likewise, man, thank you. Hey, I appreciate you. I appreciate, uh, you know, what you're doing for, for the culture and everything and uh thank you anytime you need me man just hit me up you got you got you got my digits <clears throat> hey man most definitely same goes for you as well you ever need anything promotional wise ads raw ran on the radio station help promote projects don't hesitate to reach out man we most definitely will cook something up and play it on the air for you that's what's up but i gotta say sly thank you so much have yourself a wonderful night and most definitely stay safe out there on the west coast and of course happy holidays 
Hey, likewise, Merry Christmas, Happy Holidays. Everybody be safe, man. You be safe, DJ Moore. Hey, I most definitely will try, Sly. Thank you so much.